Hi, my name is David Horvath, and today I will be talking about making math more 21st century. So, when you think of math, what do you think of? Give you a moment here to come up with some ideas. Okay. So, when most people think of math, they say they don't teach it like they used to. All of this common core stuff doesn't make any sense. Why can't we just go back and do it the old way? And I think this picture here is a great way to describe how kids can feel sometimes. It's frustrating. They don't get it. Their parents can't help them. So it can be a stressful subject and a stressful time for learning. When we think about math being taught in the classroom, we think of these drill and kill teaching, worksheets, formulas. Teachers will look at you, say, here is our work for today, lay down their paper, you're doing traditional multiplication, and that's it. Here's your steps, here's how you practice. Or as you get further up in math, up to the middle and high school, here's a formula, find what numbers you need to plug into the formula and solve it. There's not that deeper level thought, that deeper level learning that goes into the mathematics instruction. Okay. Now when we think about the United States as a whole, we like to hold ourselves to a higher standard and we like to think that we're the best in everything that we do or we're always striving to be the best. But as you look at some of the national and worldwide test scores, the United States is, you know, slowly falling backwards, falling down that list of countries. When you look here at this chart, this is from the TIMS website from 2019. It's a mathematics test that is given uh, to countries all over the world. And here's our data for it. It's, I picked the fourth grade because I'm a fourth grade teacher. So this is most relevant to me. And as you can see here, the United States really isn't too close to the top. We look at the middle of the pack um, as fourth graders and their learning in mathematics. So something that kids struggle with but is most beneficial to them is practicing math word problems. And how we learn them sometimes or how kids are taught to solve them is not always best. When I think about math word problems, I think of those stories where someone goes to the store and they buy 50 watermelons. You know, these kids, when they're learning, aren't going to be going to a store to buy 50 watermelons. We need to start making math word problems more relevant to the learners and experiences that they're going to have and not have these outlandish type stories where they really can't make a good, solid connection to it. So expectations. We want students to be able to be successful and understand math. We want them to be able to take what is being taught to them and apply it to their daily lives and be able to use it for the rest of their lives. We don't want them sitting there saying that they hate learning. Math is hard. You know, we want them to have constructive struggle, be able to work their way through problems and not give up, not quit, you know, persevere. A big thing is me as a uh, fourth grade teacher, try to teach your kids perseverance. You can work your way through it. You have the ability to do it. But as teachers, we like to come in and help too quickly. We don't allow that time for constructive struggling. So, like I said, we want them to be able to struggle constructively. We want students doing most of the work. They have the ideas to get through a problem to be able to solve it. The teacher should not be there to rescue and give the answer. They need to ask questions to help guide students through the process to develop their own thinking. So what can we try new? So more open-ended problems with student collaboration. So we don't want students just to take paper, go solve it by their own, and that be it. We want collaboration. We want talking. We want discussions. We want you know, students modeling for other students, defending their answers, using games that make learning more fun, taking board games that we know and applying it and adding those word problems to the questions that they are being asked in the board games. Um, 
using the word problems instead of just learning equations. Okay, it's great to know that y equals mx plus b, but what does that really mean? How can we apply that to our daily lives? Why is it important? So limitations and uh, barriers that we're going to be facing. Resources, lack of knowledge of best practices. I will talk about professional development that we're going to need we as teachers who are already hired and have been working for years we need the help to make our teaching better we need better professional development we need better resources to help with our teaching okay so where can these issues be solved at starting out with new teachers at a university having better instruction and learning how to apply these new ideas to their teaching instead of reverting back to what we've been doing for the past, you know, 30 years, getting new ideas and being able to use them in the classroom. But for teachers who have been working for, you know, years, we need better professional development. We need to know how to apply this in our daily classroom activities, not just okay, here is something you can do and that's it. We need somebody to coach our way throughout the year. Okay, you're doing this well, keep using this. You know, here's how you can improve. Um, a lot of these aren't going to be ways just to read in a textbook and say, okay, I can do this now. It's going to take practice, it's going to take time, but you need support through professional development for being able to teach word problems in a more effective way. Thank you.